We got a lot to talk about with Toto, so strap in, but if you're not caught up through 259 of the manga, spoilers beware. Chapter 259 was an emotional roller coaster, but Toto stepping in to save Yuji at his lowest once again was the moment we all needed to bring us back up after the devastation with Choso. But we'll be talking about Choso in other videos. For this one, I want to focus on what Toto did, how he did it, and maybe how he has his technique back, what's going on, just all of the questions surrounding Toto, of which I've gotten a ton. So let's start going through these. So first, real quick, let's talk about what Toto actually did. Sukuna used his fire arrow to create this massive explosion within the confines of his domain that basically annihilates every living being within it, right? Well, Toto used his boogie woogie to swap Maki, Ino, and Miwa out of harm's way, and he swapped them with crows that Meime had positioned just outside of the domain. So the whole plan involved Toto purposely staying back to be able to make that swap. But in order to do so, he would not only have to gain his boogie woogie technique back, but he would have to vastly increase the range. So we see him pop in and tell Yuji, uh, everybody's probably okay. And that's because Toto himself doesn't even know if this worked, but that was the attempted plan that they tried to enact. And he basically just has to hope for the best. But we know that he seemingly got the technique back considering he even thought he had a chance to have saved them. So how is all of that possible? Because last we left Toto in Shibuya, he said his technique was gone because he had completely lost one of his hands and his other hand had also been damaged by Idol Transfiguration. Now the Toto RCT Idol Transfiguration conversation is one I've had many times. If you want a more in-depth exploration of it, you can check some of my older videos. But the short version is that uh, Toto doesn't know RCT in this moment, but even if he did, that wouldn't be sufficient to heal his hand and heal the damage Mahito did to him because Mahito changed the shape of his soul and simple RCT would not be able to heal the soul. However, in recent chapters, we did find out that Sukuna is capable of healing soul damage. The way Maki struck him through the heart with the soul split katana, he can heal. He just wasn't strong enough to heal it in the moment. We know that he can heal it because of his unique ability to perceive the shape of his own soul, which is an ability he has thanks to sharing a body with Yuji. This is the same reason Yuji can damage the soul thanks to his perception of it. So with that data point, it then became theoretically possible for soul damage uh, to be healed, but there is a question of is soul damage like from the soul split katana the same thing as idol transfiguration because Mahito literally reshapes you. So it might not be damage per se. And if it's not, then maybe even soul RCT wouldn't be able to heal it. Now I know this is very long winded, but I'm just getting all of that groundwork out of the way so we can understand where we're working from. So one possibility for how Toto got his hand or his RCT back is with soul RCT, assuming it can heal what Mahito did. If it wasn't that, then perhaps there are some sort of binding vows in play. But we also know that he has a big ass bandage on his hand, right? So presumably he was healed to some extent, but more on that in a second. First, let's talk about this potential pathway via Soul RCT. If that's how Toto got his technique back, then it would have had to have been either Yuji or Yuda that healed him. We know in Yuji's case, he can perceive the soul. So he would theoretically be able to do this type of Soul RCT. However, he didn't know RCT, but we know that he learned it during the month time skip. We don't know if he can do RCT on others though. Now, Yuta Okotsu is a master of RCT. He can do it on others, but he doesn't have the soul perception ability. However, these two swapped with each other during the month time skip, and we actually found that out in this chapter. So theoretically, they both could have learned what they lacked from the other. Yuji could have learned how to do RCT on others from Okotsu, and Okotsu could have learned how to perceive the soul from Yuji. However, on the Okotsu note, I don't know if he would have learned how to perceive the soul at least to the same extent that Yuji can because we know that Yuji's punches are the only ones harming Sukuna uh, and his soul and the barrier between him and Megami, right? Yuji's are the ones that are lowering Sukuna's outputs. There has been no mention of that from Akotsu. So if he can perceive the soul, you would imagine he'd be doing the same thing, but he's not. So that makes me think that maybe he can't, but again, it could be like a level's to the game type of scenario. So like maybe he can perceive it enough to heal, but just not to strike Sukuna, but then we're getting like 
really in the weeds, right? So I think it could be more likely if Yuji just learned RCT on others from Akotsu. However, there is a wrench in this as well, because part of this whole thing between Toto and Meimei and constructing this plan to swap people out via the crows was to keep it from Yuji so that Sukuna had no chance of learning it. So if that was the case, then wouldn't Yuji being the one to heal Toto and get his technique back kind of threaten that plan? Now, I do think both things could exist. Like, of course, Yuji would want to heal his brother if he got this ability all of a sudden and would have done it. And then they still could have kept him in the dark about how they planned to use it. Sure, but it is worth mentioning at least. So I don't know if either of these options feel really solid for explaining Toto, but they're possible. Another option is that Toto could have learned from his own soul swaps, right? Either how to do RCT or maybe something that helped him get his technique back. However, the prime candidate for that seems to be Yuji, because Yuji knows the perception of the soul, and we know he ultimately learns RCT, right? But he couldn't have swapped with Yuji because Yuji already used his two swaps per month on Kusakabe and Akotsu. So maybe Toto swapped with Akotsu, because we only know the Yuji swap as far as Yuta is concerned. Now, I did speculate in a previous video that maybe Yuta swapped with Higaruma, and I do still think that's possible, but there's something in this chapter that makes me wonder if Toto and Akotsu swapped. And if they did, then Toto could have learned RCT that way. And if Akotsu and Yuji swapped before this potential Yuta-Toto swap, then maybe by the transitive property, he could have somehow figured out the perception of his soul as well. But that's shaky at best. In any case, you know, maybe he swapped with Shoko, and that's how he learned RCT and could at least get, you know, that going again. But again, there's just many options here, but none of them feel perfect. However, with all of that out of the way, I actually don't think Toto got his technique back via Soul RCT. I think it was just never really gone and he figured out a new way to utilize it. Based on this statement here, I can still feel its throbbing beat, the pulse of Boogie Woogie. That's not a statement you'd make if somebody healed you and you now had access to it again. It's a statement you'd make about like finding a new pathway to something you thought you had lost, right? So I think maybe from Soul Swapping or Training, he learned RCT and maybe that's how he got Got his hand back, but I think the technique he found his own way back to. And another really interesting line from this chapter is this one right here, where it talks about Toto spending time fine-tuning his technique alongside Akotsu. So does that imply that they soul-swapped, or does it just imply that they trained together? Because I think a really interesting angle here would be Akotsu copying Boogie Woogie from Toto, and then the both of them being able to use it and experiment on it, theorycraft with it. And maybe that helped Toto get his technique back, or at the very least, helped Toto learn how to expand the range of it, which we know he did. So I actually think a lot of their growth can be attributed to this training they did together. And I think Toto constructed some binding vows here. At the very least, I think a binding vow is involved in Boogie Woogie's increased range. And there's probably one involved in actually getting the technique back online in the first place. And I actually put out a video a couple weeks, maybe a month ago, talking about Toto potentially using a binding vow in this way. So I think that's probably more likely than the sole RCT pathway. But so all of this does beg the question, what's under that cast? Because if Toto did regrow his hand via RCT, whether it was him or somebody else that did it, he wouldn't need all of those bandages, right? Because RCT just regrows fully healed limbs. It wouldn't have a recovery time that you would need to protect it with. So what's under there? I think there's a couple possibilities. Either it's some sort of prosthetic or some sort of like experimental thing and it's not really like his or a human hand per se. And so for that reason, it's just still healing and you know, we're keeping it wrapped up until the last possible moment. Or it is his hand and it did come back from RCT, but given Mahito and Idol Transfiguration, it didn't regrow a hand, it regrew that kind of amorphous blob that Mahito turned it into. Something along the lines of this. Now that looks way too big, but it is a possibility. But I'm leaning more towards the like prosthetic or weird experimental angle than amorphous blob. But also, considering we see Toto start to unwrap his hand at the end of the chapter, this begs another question, because we already know he used the technique by swapping his allies with the crows. So he presumably did that with his hand wrapped. So can Toto use the technique without clapping? And why is he unwrapping the hand now? So does the hand maybe not have anything to do with his technique, and there's something else that that hand is capable of, which could lean towards the experimental angle? In any case, Boogie Woogie is back, and Toto is back. And if he participated in these 
looks way too big, but wait to see what he's learned because we have seen the exponential growth from everyone else. And Toto is an absolute genius, right? That gets overlooked a lot, but just imagine what he could have learned and absorbed from other sorcerers thanks to his intellect. So I cannot wait to see what Toto is going to show us. And just by the virtue of how he was unraveling the hand at the end, that implies some sort of reveal. So whether it is, you know, some sort of contraption or, you know, prosthetic, whatever the case may be, I think Toto has a lot to show us. Now, could that mean domain expansion or curse technique reversal? I certainly think those things are on the table. And speaking of domains, I actually got asked to create a domain for Toto, and that's something I actually did a few months ago. I made a video making some domain expansions for characters that didn't have them. So I'm going to link that down in the pinned comments of YouTube below for anybody that wants to check that out. And again, I think we could see a domain from Toto here, but what I'll say is it seems prime for some old-fashioned jump kaizen, just Yuji and Toto going in on Sukuna using Boogie Woogie to its full extent. Now, does a domain mean that couldn't happen? No, depending on what Toto's domain does, like maybe that would just enhance it. But I just don't think we have to see a domain from Toto for him to still show out and Gege to give us an awesome sequence here. All right, y'all, this has been one heck of a yap sesh, and we're actually not done yet. But I wanted to pause and give a special shout out to everybody who donated, asking their various Toto questions. Thank you guys so much. I've been trying to cover them just as we've been going in this video, and we have hit most of them. But there are a few outliers that didn't really make sense to talk about while we were talking about all of that. So let's get into those now. And first up, we got this question on can Toto use Boogie Woogie on Sukuna given that there is such a vast difference in skill level between them? And I think so, just because I don't think there's ever been mention of such a limitation on Boogie Woogie. Like Toto has never said somebody has to be within this realm of strength compared to me or else they'll be too powerful and it won't work. So since nothing like that's ever been said... I assume it's fine. Also, Sukuna is severely weakened thanks to all of the fighting that's been going on, so I think Toto can use Boogie Woogie on him. Next, I got asked, how did Toto swap Maki with a crow considering she doesn't have cursed energy? And one of the limitations we do know of with Boogie Woogie is that there must be cursed energy in order for something to swap. This is why Yuji infused that rock with cursed energy during the Shibuya fight, and also why Toto was able to swap the cursed tool during the Hanami fight because the cursed tool has cursed energy. Maki doesn't have any. So what I think happened is that Miwa just infused Maki with cursed energy uh, in order to be swapped, since that would have been part of the plan and Miwa was already there to simple domain and try and protect Maki. I think that's the most likely explanation for what happened. Um, but it could also be that Toto just swapped the soul split katana and since Maki was holding it, she went along with it. Uh, so I do think there are a couple options, but I'm leaning towards the Miwa one. Next, I was asked, with Toto re-entering the story, do I think that means Gojo's coming back? And you guys already know I'm all aboard the Gojo comeback train, but I don't think this Toto resurgence has anything to do with it. Like, I don't think it makes it any more or any less likely. As I'm sure you guys know by now, there's a lot of other things I'll point to that show Gojo's coming back. But yeah, I wouldn't say this does. Next, I got asked if Maharaga could adapt to Boogie Woogie, and yes, I think so. Maharaga can adapt to virtually anything. So I don't know exactly what form it would take, but I imagine eventually Maharaga would just become immune to being swapped by it. Our next question wanted to know why aren't more people talking about what Toto mentioned in Season 1, Episode 16, where he's explaining sorcery and cursed energy to Yuji, and he talks about this three-pronged approach between the soul, the body, and the mind. And I think for this, we need to zoom out because this is more of a philosophical discussion that Gege has been exploring within the themes of Jujutsu Kaisen. And the body and the soul, I would say, have gotten more coverage than the mind. Uh, but I think largely this entire dynamic is going to come full circle and mostly be explored with the Yuji Sukuna connection because we know largely they are the same in these regards. They have the same soul, they share the same body, and the mind one's a bit harder to kind of like draw the parallel there. But I think the point is, even with all of those things being the same, it's still dependent on an individual's choices and their own interpretation and interaction with the world. Yuji and Sukuna being so similar in those regards, yet vastly different in practice. So I do think that Gege is going to show us that mirror between those two and kind of tell the story he wants to tell, wax poetic on these philosophical things. So I still very much think that is at the forefront of this story here. But yeah, a lot of people don't seem to talk about it. 
Our next question asks, Shibuya Toto versus Shibuya Choso. And first of all, how dare you, okay? How dare you pit the brothers against each other like that? And picture unrelated, I didn't pit them against each other in this poll or anything, but also go vote in the poll. I feel like our boy Toto deserves some more love. And yeah, this isn't the fight against each other. It's just who's the best big brother. But Shibuya Toto versus Shibuya Choso uh, is really interesting, actually. I think that's a very high diff fight. But I think I gotta give the edge to Toto just because I think his intellect and the general confusion he could cause Choso with Boogie Woogie would ultimately allow him to be the victor. And then finally today I was asked, will Toto survive? And don't put that on me, man. Don't put that evil on me. I'm nervous, okay? We just had Choso rip away from us violently, and, you know, some might say, that's enough. But this is Gege we're dealing with here. And Toto just stepped into the lion's den. And uh, I'm worried, okay? I'm worried. I, I don't feel strongly either way. Like, I definitely don't think people are safe. So, like, I think Toto is definitely on the chopping board. But I do think he could escape. You know, there's just, there's a lot on the table. I'm nervous, man. Why did you ask me this? I don't think... Uh, I'm nervous, okay? I'm nervous. I hope he survives. I hope he survives, okay? But do I expect him to? Not really. Anyways, y'all, that's gonna do it for this one. And if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. This was a long one, so I appreciate you bearing with me. And since the things we talked about in this video aren't really concrete, we're still waiting for more evidence, please let me know your thoughts, theories, and interpretations down below. I would love to hear them. And again, thank you so much for everybody who supported. And again, again, thank you for watching. I'll see you soon.